Yesterday, we completed with uh, creating a inventory requisition and uh, followed by purchase order and receiving. So created requisition number three. Sir, I have created, sir. Actually, okay. uh, EHQJ instance uh, purchase equation page is not working, sir. Okay, sir. No problem. No problem. Okay, so this is the requisition that I yesterday created. And uh, in the requisition, we discussed about uh, the life cycle. And, you know, I can duplicate and I can create a another requisition here okay i'm hitting the duplicate button i'm creating a new requisition by copying this existing requisition okay and uh, i'm submitting it for the approval After the approval, I will show you a couple of uh, options on the requisition. Okay, it's approved, right? Now, currently, who is a preparer? Entered by is the preparer and the requester. Suppose, you know, if you wanted to reassign to somebody else, see, suppose this guy has gone, the com has, has left the company and you want to change the preparer, we can do it. Go to actions, click on reassign button and enter the person that you want to assign and click on send a notification also that they will be receiving a notification about this requisition. Okay, so this is reassigning the preparer. And uh, new document history is nothing but who approved this uh, requisition. So if you click on this hyperlink, you can see who has approved uh, this particular requisition. It's an uh, action history, nothing but approval history. So on so-and-so date, on so-and-so time, so and so person has approved this requisition. Okay. Approval history is this. And reassigning the requisition. And uh, canceling the requisition. Suppose, you know, if you don't want to convert, uh, I mean, you can cancel the requisition from here. And withdraw and edit. Withdraw and edit is nothing but uh, once you submit for the approval, the control, uh, the control is with the approver. So you can withdraw that approval control from the approver and you can edit and you can perform the changes and you can submit for the approval again. Okay. Duplicating the requisition, canceling the requisition. In case uh, if you have submitted the requisition for approval, you can withdraw that approval request and you can edit and resubmit the requisition and reassigning the preparer viewing the document history, nothing but upload history, and uh, viewing this requisition in the PDF format. Okay.
clear all those options? Yes. Okay. Now, and I think you know from here we have created non-catalog requisition. I have explained that already. You can try. And from here I created item item based requisition. Nothing but inventory requisition. I created from here. Kindly explore these two options, update preparer and update requester. Update requisition preferences is nothing but this one. You can click on here or you can click on here to update the preferences. But what is this? Uh, please explore and let me know tomorrow. Update preparer and update requester. Okay. And request new supplier creation. You know, you can initiate new supplier to onboard into the system from here itself. Okay. That also you can just click on that and try it. Now from the SSP module, uh, we will uh, see how to create information template. How to create information template, okay, we'll see that. So to perform all these configurations, as I mentioned already, you should have a role called procurement catalog administrator role. You need that role. Procurement catalog administrator role is required. Okay. In two browsers, I logged with the same business user. And uh, from the procurement, if you navigate to the catalogs uh, place, catalogs place, there we can create the information template. From the task list, click on main is information templates. And I'm creating new one. And uh, enter the name. And uh, company terms and conditions. Mm, not this. I'm on a different uh, screen. From the task list. Click on manage information template. It's not a template, it's a catalog. Sorry, I confused. I'm navigating to main use catalogs. 
and uh, right now I'm planning to create information catalog. Informational catalog. Click on that. Enter the name and description. Enter the name and description. And the URL is nothing but where this information you have placed. That link you can provide. You know, I have placed this information here, the terms and conditions, and I'm taking this and uh, I'll put it here. And this keywords is nothing but the keywords is nothing but you know in the in the procure in the requisition screen you see here the search area do you see the search area right so you can search based on the keywords that is entered here the search here here the search is based on the keywords that you entered here clear yes Okay. After defining the information template, which type of users are able to access this? Uh, I mean, if you can control uh, the access. Uh, or the visibility of this uh, information template you can control based on the content zone i'm creating a, i'm creating a content zone now go to content zones and i'm selecting new all be new users content zone name and add here the information catalog that you created, add here. I'm providing this access to the users who are assigned to our view. Nothing but who has our view access, they're able to see, they're able to see who has our view access, they're able to see the terms and conditions. This is called as a content zone. Content zone is nothing but this particular content is visible to which users. Okay. If you want, you can also mention a particular user also. This need to be visible to only our user. Okay. Clear. Content zone good. Information catalog and then content zone both are good. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now let's log out and log in. Or else I think you can go back to the home screen and come back to the. Come back to the requisition screen. scroll down and here see in this section company terms and condition okay if i click on that clear okay now next topic is so we are done with these two topics now these two. The next topic is uh, smart form, nothing but a request form. Okay, so we can create requisitions quickly.
I'm navigating to many smart forms. Select the business unit and uh, Suppose uh, you are buying the business cars, nothing but visiting cars very frequently. Okay, we can, uh, and this keyword is same, which is used for the search prep purpose. Line type. Goods, item description, item category, marketing category is not there. I'm uh, selecting advertisement and a quantity unit of measure. Price. And uh, so category, uh, you know, the item description should not be edible. And uh, quantity can be edible, but price is not edible. Quantity can be edible, but the price is not edible. Okay. So we can decide here, you know, which fields are edible by the business user. You can decide here. I'm, I'm allowing only these two fields to be edible. Okay. Price, huh? I think I, okay, I restricted basically. Except these two, nothing but price and description, others can be edible. Okay. Same, this need to be added to the content zone also. Same, go to the content zone. So here we have created a smart form. Now I'm navigating to the content zone. And uh, we can assign to the same content zone. Or you can create a new content zone if you want. So far, good. Yes, sir. Home page. Navigating to the home page and uh, procurement and go to purchase requisitions. So here, request form. Okay, and if I click on that, you can see automatically all the data filled from there. Item description. Item description is not edible, right? It is not edible. Price is edible? No. But remaining can be edible. Category, quantity, all the remaining can be edible. And it is very easy and quick to create the requisitions using the smartphones. Okay, good. Next to purchasing news, announcement. Purchasing news is nothing but announcement. Pay itself, click on the purchasing news. You know, our, uh, our application is uh, same announcement. Let's plan for our video. Yeah. 
we want this purchasing news to be displayed. Uh, it's an announcement. Purchasing news is nothing but announcement to the employees. Okay. Clear team? Yes. Yes. So, so far I completed how many topics? Three. What are those? Content zone, smart form. Information and catalog. Content zones and smart forms and purchasing news. Request forms. Mm, smart form and request form. Okay, smart form request form both are okay. okay. Now you have seen that you observe these sections. Now you see the recent requisitions that we created and the requisitions that is converted to the purchase order. Recent purchases. Recently converted, I think, but recent purchases and uh, purchasing news section, information and tips section, request form section, the recently viewed section. Okay. Now, next topic. Uh, we have two topics that is uh, local catalog and punch out catalog. The local catalog and punch out catalog, I will explain you after. I will explain you after completion of the agreement topic. Okay. I will explain you that time. And the public shopping list, uh, we can discuss now itself, public shopping list. Punch out catalog, local catalog, I'll explain you after the agreement creation, okay? I'm explaining the public shopping list now. Suppose if any new employee joins in the company, we provide some kit to that employee, right? We provide some kit to them that employee. Yes, sir. Yeah, this also it has the dependency also with the uh, with the previous topic. Um, I will I will explain this uh, after completion of the local catalog uh, topic. Okay. So here I have to cover the punch out catalog and then local catalog, and uh, this is a dependent topic to the local catalog. And public shopping list is also dependent topic to the local catalog. Okay. Except these topics I've covered all of the other topics. You can see here we have seen item based attract position right. And we have discussed about approvals. We have discussed how to duplicate, cancel, reassign with the other requisitions. And you know the roles also. How many roles are there? Three roles are there. Procurement requester, procurement preparer, advanced procurement requester. We will discuss about tables now, tables. And you know how to convert the requisition into purchase order. And we have seen how to receive the stock also. Okay. Let us see the tables. In fusion, all the all the requisition tables. In case of EBS, what are the requisition tables? In case of Oracle EBS, what is the prefix at least? PO. Okay, what is the requisition header table, line table? PO requisition header solve, PO requisition line solve. PO requisition header solve, PO requisition line solve. So PO is a prefix. Huh? 
in case of EBS, for every table name, PO is a prefix, right? Infusion for requisitions, the prefix is POR for requisition tables. You can see all the table starts with which prefix POR. Okay, that is the difference here. And other than that, table names uh, remains the same. Okay, these are the two important tables, POR requisition header solve, POR requisition line solve. So in case of EBS, just a PO prefix, but here POR, R stands for requisition. Okay. This important table, so it, can, it, it captures the header information of the requisition, it captures the line information of the requisition. Okay, and uh, if you remember those two tables, now that is enough as a functional consultant if somebody asks in the interview you can just uh, mention about those two table names now we have seen an option to uh, cancel the requisition right if it is one requisition you can cancel it you know if you open the requisition you know you can cancel it right Suppose you know you have to cancel uh, requisitions in bulk, like maybe thousand or two thousand or five thousand. In that case, what is the option available? In that case, which option is available? Not only this this for the requisition, you know this type of uh, requirements will get for other documents also. If it is one or two, we can cancel manually. Or maybe five ten you can cancel manually if it is more than that. So there is a there is an option called REST API. This is technical. You know, this is uh, pure technical. But at least you should know what is the way or what is the option to cancel the requisitions in bulk. Okay, that's why I have mentioned here. So, what is meant by REST API? Okay, I'll just give a theoretical idea on the topic. So, you can also search and find the REST API list Oracle Fusion Procurement REST API 23C. So here uh, I'll show you the list of the REST APIs that are available. So this is for the repositions and if you click on that, see here, for repositions there is a way Cancel the requisition. Cancel the requisition. Okay. So this is the REST API call. This is the REST API call. And you have to call this from a you have to call this from a tool called Postman. You can download Postman tool as a free, as a free from the web Postman tool. You can download it from the web. I'm explaining theoretically about this process. If you get uh, this type of requirement to cancel the requisitions in bulk, you can use the Postman tool. Okay. So here, In the postman tool, you see the URL here, team. You see the URL, REST API URL. Okay, so this you have to put it there. Here you have to put it the 
REST API. Okay. And here you have to enter the requisition ID, which requisition you want to cancel. So in the front end, you are able to see the requisition number, right? In the front end. But in the table level, you are able to see this requisition number ID. This requisition number ID, that requisition number ID you have to pass here. You have to enter here. Sir, but this is for bulk cancellation, right? Yes, this is for bulk. Then ID will be, I mean, so, so many IDs will be generated. Yes. So if you want to cancel 100 requisitions, then 100 IDs, you have to uh, change that uh, IDs every time. Okay. It's easy. Okay. Suppose if the requisition ID is so and so. Okay, you can mention that and uh, you can mention the URL here. Okay, okay. next time, next time, same. not same, not at all same. Let me finish, man. Okay, so here we are canceling individually only, but it is the easiest and quickest process. There is other way, other way is also there. Like FBDA is there. In case of FBDA, first of all, you have to prepare all the requisitions information there. In case of FBDA, you know, you have to fill a lot of data, right? At least minimum 10 columns, you have to fill that in that FBDA template. And later you are able to cancel it. But it is the easiest way compared to other techniques. So, you know, this reminds, This is the URL, and after that, body, you see body, you can copy the body here, and you can put the body here. I'm changing the body, okay? And uh, you have the list of requisition IDs that you want to cancel. Let us take this is the list that you have. Okay. So this is the first requisition ID. Okay. So just you click on the send button. That's it. Click on the send button. And after that, change the requisition ID here. And then click on the send button. And again, change the requisition ID here. Click on the send button. We are canceling one by one. But, you know, it's easier than the other methods. Click on the send button. And again, understood the process. Understood team? Yes, sir. Okay. And this here, we are doing one by one. We can also automate this by using OIC. Suppose if you are having license to the Oracle integration tool, Oracle integration tool, then using this tool, using this tool, we can input this uh, requisition IDs in this tool, and this tool will automatically cancel all these requisitions one by one. Okay. okay. So this is one by one, but using this tool, you know, you can automate this process using this tool. So as I mentioned, this is pure technical. Okay, but I'm explaining the process. At least if you're having critical knowledge, then you can talk to your technical consultants and you can make this work to be done in the project. Okay, so after installing the tool, first of all, after installing the tool, you have to provide, a, you have to link this tool to your application your application, you have to provide the credentials. Here it is, <clears throat> here itself. 
authorization okay you have to enter the username and password application login nothing but your application username and password and uh, somewhere you should also provide the application url application url also we should pass nothing but whether you are test application or production application you have to pass that somewhere In the link itself, I think we should pass. In the link itself, let me reopen the tool. This is a free tool, as I mentioned. You can download from the internet. So in this Postman tool, what we are passing, okay, we are passing REST API URL and then body okay First of all, this application has to connect to our, uh, this tool has to connect to our application web. So for that, uh, in this tool, we have to add in the authorization, we have to add username and password. And uh, link, I believe, I think uh, here we need to mention our application URL that I forgot in here or where uh, it has to be mentioned. I mean, you are working on which application, whether the test application or production application, that URL. I forgot where to mention it. I should have created a copy of workspaces. Let's see.
not able to i'm not touching this uh, i'm not using this frequently from the last three months earlier i used to do frequently or work on frequently on this for every month but from the last three months i'm not working on this uh, i'll check with the uh, technical guy and let you know okay so your url should be also mentioned in the post method only uh, before this method name uh, we can add the uh, host name you mean here yeah yeah before because this the is the method name yeah before that we need to add the host name for host name and port name etc to call the request okay you mean uh, like this yeah 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 so this is the rest api call this is the method name and before yeah, the server name can be different test or prod yeah okay so what you are saying this is a server name yeah. okay your content or you want me to check with my technical guy very much confident we have okay. done it in the past year okay okay team understood <laughs> at least theoretical understood team yes sir theoretical the concept understood Mm -hmm. concept is yeah you know it's a technical work but it's a simple work also functional they can do it but uh you know for the first time you should understand uh how to do this yeah, later on it's easy yeah. so generally we don't think of this method rest api method being a functional consultant we don't think of this method to uh, Think on this method to perform bulk changes. So you have to keep in mind this option is also available. Using this option also, we can do that. Okay. In, you know, sometimes in case of REST API, here canceling a requisition. Okay. This is one REST API. There is another REST API to update you see here update all lines not one line this api it is used to update all the lines so some rest apis will provide the flexibility to update all the reports also at a time but here this rest api cancel requisition rest api it is giving an option to cancel only one requisition one by one you are doing but some rest apis they will provide option to update I mean to say work on more than one record also, all the reports. Okay. So here in this REST API link, so this is the REST API URL. Post method is nothing but, uh, you know, get method is there, post method is there. Get method is to get the data, get the data from the application. Post method is nothing but to update the data into the application. So if you are canceling the requisition is nothing but you are performing which operation? Update operation. That's why this is called as a post method. Okay, this is post REST API URL. So this URL, this URL, and uh, after that, uh, after that, this is the body that you have to pass in the tool. This is the body. Okay, so here in this in this body, let me explain this also pretty clearly. Here in the body, uh, this is cancel. What is the cancel uh, cancel reason? What is the cancel reason? Okay, the reason you can specify here why you are canceling the requisition. Okay, received ticket number. You can mention the ticket number. You got a ticket, and uh, accordingly, you are canceling the requisition. You can mention the ticket number as part of the cancel reason. So this is what, this is nothing but the body, okay? You can mention this in the body. We have a body here, right? So here you can mention it. The rest API URL where you are mentioning, here you are mentioning, and here you are mentioning the body, okay? And if you click on the send button, you will get the response here. What is the response that you can see from 
here. If you scroll down, you can see the response body. The response body is nothing but the result. If you see code is equal to success, that means that record is successfully canceled. The REST API method and the body and response. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. This is uh, uh, sir. I have one uh, small question. And once we cancel this uh, requisition from this uh, URL, what is the username it will show? Who has cancelled that one? What the user? It will show what is the username that you entered here. Here in the other edition, you have to enter the username, right? Okay, right, right, right. You have to enter the password, right? Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So this username password is nothing but your application login. Okay. okay thank you. And you have to create a workspace here. Create a workspace. And uh, if you create a workspace, uh, you'll be landed to this page. In this space, you can enter the method and you can enter the username and password. And in the body, you can mention the body. Okay, the body is also provided in the REST API link by the Oracle. Okay, and the Oracle website, you can see that. This is change order. This is change order. Any questions on the REST API? Theoretically, I'm trying to explain to you, okay? Any questions? Good? No response as always. <laughs> okay, this is change order. Didn't understand much, sir. <clears throat> yesterday we created a, a requisition and we created a PO also we have created a PO also okay suppose as a requester you know if you wanted to initiate the changes if you want to initiate the changes you can initiate the changes from here okay you see here go to actions and if you click on edit order if you click on edit order, see this action will create a change order on the document. Do you want to continue? Yes, I would like to continue. Yes, I want to continue. So here, I'm increasing the quantity. I'm entering, uh, yeah. earlier we ordered three, two. Now I'm increasing to three. I'm increasing to three and increasing Twenty from two to three. Okay, and click on the submit button. So this is called as requester initiated change order. The requester can initiate a change order from the sum of the quantity should be same as this is because of the the schedules. This is because of the schedules and we have created two schedules here yesterday, right? In the PO and one schedule for one quantity and the schedule for uh, one quantity. Now, uh, the two schedules uh, quantity is two, but your line quantity is three. Your line is three. But uh, this line is containing how many schedules? Two schedules. Each schedule is containing how much quantity? One quantity. The error that we are getting is the sum of the schedule quantity is equal to the line quantity. Okay, I'm changing it from one to two. Okay, now click on the submit button. So this is requester initiated change order. 
and you can see a PO number one. What is a PO number one, right? And for that system has created a change or a number one. Let's see the PO now. Procurement and purchase orders. Main is orders. And PO number one. You were number one. And now what should be the line quantity now? Three, right? You see here. So who initiated this change order team? Requester, right? Because from the requisition, requester has initiated the change order. That's why this is called as a requester initiated change order. Line quantity change to three. And then the schedules also you see first to schedule quantity change it to two. And you can also see the history. If you go to actions and if you click on view change history, if you click on view change history, you can see initiated party is requester, who is the initiator. This is what kind of change order? External change order. Why it is external change order? Because, because this needs to be communicated to the supplier, right? Yes. That's why this is called as external change order. If you click on this uh, hyperlink, if you click on this hyperlink, you can also clearly see what is the earlier quantity. You can see that. Okay, let me. If you click on the details, what was the quantity earlier to and change it to three because of that, there is a change in the ordered amount also. Okay. So this is requester initiated external change order. Actually, we have defined auto approval. We have defined auto approval for our PO. That's where this change is automatically approved. But uh, you remember, we can also configure approvals for the change orders, right? You remember, yes. change yes. order approval conditions I have explained to you. Okay. If it is internal change order, you can set it to automatic approval. But if it is external change order, you can route for the approvals. So if you configure change order mm -hmm. approvals in your PO, this change order has to be approved, has to be approved before this change to happen in the PO. Good. Yes, sir. So now I'll explain you the buyer initiated change order. Buyer initiated change order is nothing but I'm the buyer. I'm on the PO screen. I'm on the screen, PO screen. I can initiate a change order from here. This is called as a buyer initiated change order. It's already approved the PO. I would like to initiate a change. Okay. Click on the edit button. I'm initiating a change. I'm changing the date. Not 10th August, I'm changing to 20th August. Once I click on the save, you can see who initiated this change, buyer, and who is that buyer, and what type of change is this, external change. And if you click on submit for approval, it need to be approved. So this is buyer initiated change order. Requester can initiate a change order from the requisition. Buyer can initiate a change order from the purchase order.
okay and also you can see the revision number as well now the change order 2 is uh, still waiting for the approval see here pending change order on this po change order number 2 it's waiting for the approval the status is pending for approval okay once it is approved the blue color indication is go away it will disappear the blue color indication yeah now it's approved if i open it again is that a status do you see blue color indication no and do you see a change order on the right hand side no and if you go to actions and if you click on the change history for external change orders revision number also will be created revision number you see revision number one revision number two because this is external change revision number created along with the change order if it is internal change only change order will be created revision number will not be created so simply if there is a revision number the changes has to be communicated to the supplier simply there is a revision number changes has to be complicated communicated to the supplier good yes sir yes sir request for initiated change order by your initiated change order so in the ssp module i have to cover the punch out catalog and public shopping list you know this section i need to cover so this section i will cover after completion of the agreement topic because agreement topic is dependent for the local catalog this local catalog uh, is dependent uh, on this setup and on this setup this public shopping list is dependent i can also explain the punch out catalog now itself but if I explain punch out catalog after the local catalog, that will give you more clarity. That is the reason I'm not explaining the punch out catalog. So these topics I will explain you after completion of the agreement topic in the purchase module. Okay. So tomorrow, tomorrow we'll start with the purchasing. Okay. And before that, small topics are there. This I already covered, but I'll cover the PDF layout and then uh, approval email body layout. I'll cover this, uh, you know, in the purchasing model also, because in the purchasing model also, anyway, I should cover those uh, layouts, the PO PDF layout. At the time of that, I'll cover the requisition PO PDF layout and approval email body. Any questions? That's it from my side for today. Any questions, please? One update team. In the EHQZ instance, the requisition screen is not working. You are not able to create requisitions in the EHQZ instance. Okay. But rest everything, I mean, PO creation, receiving that can be done from that instance. But requisition screen is having a problem. The page is not uh, opening properly. Okay. Thank you all. See you tomorrow. Bye. Hello, sir. Yes, madam. Sir, I'm getting error in uh, previous topic, like not in this. Can I ask? Yes, I have madam. Tell me. Minutes, Tell me. Okay. Let me check. I was not able to activate that button. You are not able to activate the tab. Eh? Yes, sir. Uh, what is the instance? I have a attached in mail itself. Okay, madam. Instance name, please. EHQG. Okay. I think so, Krishna. Maybe she might have missed some of the accounts too. All accounts has to be provided, then only we can activate. Yes, madam. <clears throat> what is the main user of the EHQZ instance? Main user that we provided. One second, sir.
what's your tag name madam 53 sk or tag sir What is your chart of account that is attached to the ledger? This one is a 1SK near One S. One S can be Anyone facing the same problem in this instance? Anyone try to do the TAD topic in this instance? Oh, I have not faced, sir. I have completed. Yeah, I have also not faced, sir. Can you check the start of account? Uh, is it uh, any issue or not with this? Try to verify in the account rule the same chart of account is given or something else is given yeah but also i need to check here also run a scale in the structure instance the same one we ran the curl account should be reliability is also correct And uh, from the financials, general lecture, minus the lectures. Oh, uh, sir, name starts with SK. Um, yes. Wait. Which one? I forgot this name. I love. <laughs> Sir, once you click on SK Limited. Actually, for all these ledgers, the chart of account is empty. Uh, no, sir, it starts with one, one SK. Can you just check it? Ah, yes. Status is a uh, oh, Your uh, ledger is uh, in error. That's yes, sir, I have checked with that when I deployed, it was successfully like status is showing uh, correct on this. <laughs> you have assigned these many companies to this lecture. No, sir. Uh, this is Dell US, sir. Sorry. Review and submit accounting. Uh, 
with one s k what's your ledger name madam this one only s yes, this one only and i'm opening the same one i could see a lot of legal entities are added here no sir i didn't add it <laughs> I'm opening. Uh, you see there, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can I'm see. opening your ledger only. But I didn't add anything, sir. There is some issue with your ledger setup only. Your chart of account and ledger setup. Madam, I'll fix this. Says I'll fix this, and I'll reply you through email, madam. Okay. Okay, sure. Sir. It's uh, eight sixteen. I'll start my next batch. It'll okay, sure. Maybe five to ten minutes. Okay. It's already late for them. Okay. okay. I'll inform you. Okay. I saw this message in the group also. I think you asked, right? Same question in the group. Yes, sir. Like because of this topic, I couldn't do further topics. Okay, madam. Yes, sir. Thank I'll, you. I'll, I'll verify. Okay.